Hi, I'm Gretel Egan, Content Manager with Wombat Security Technologies. And today, we bring you a segment in our Preventing Identity Theft series. And in this segment, I wanna to talk to you about personally identifiable information. Uh, sometimes people will refer to this as PII. And essentially, components of PII exist everywhere. Um, a piece of PII is anything that can be used alone or in combination to identify you personally. And while you may share certain pieces of PII with other people, like your birth date or your employer, um, there are pieces of PII that are specific to you. We call them one-to-one -one identifiers. These are the most important pieces of PII to keep protected because they can most easily lead to identity theft. However, it is important to keep in mind that a scammer can take other pieces, small pieces of PII, combine them to make a bigger picture of who you are and use that information to steal your identity. So essentially, what you want to do is consider your PII to be privileged information. You want to be very careful about who you give your information to. Um, and in particular, when you're talking about medical information, social security numbers, passport information, these are the pieces that are really personal. You want to be very careful about sharing those with anybody. Um, so you do not want to turn those over in, to an unsolicited caller or via an unsolicited letter or an unsolicited email because that email or that letter or that call could be an attempt by a scammer to take that information from you and use it for their personal gain. So, um, Think about monitoring your credit reports. If you are concerned that you've been the victim of a uh, personally identifiable information breach, you can initiate a credit freeze, which means that nobody can open an account in your name without verification from you in some way. Um, really, it's kind of about stranger danger, uh, for lack of a better term. As a parent, I use that term with my kids. When someone comes and approaches you via a faceless medium, um, via a phone call, via an email, via a letter, anybody could be on the other end of that. Anyone can pretend to be anyone at any time. You need to think, if a stranger walked up to me on the street and asked me for this information, would I give it to them? So consider that even though an email might look like it's coming from a reliable source, even though a logo might be on a letter, even though the caller ID might look correct on an incoming phone call. These are things that can be manipulated by a scam artist. So always be careful about managing your personal information and giving it out to people that you don't know.